Hey everybody, my name is Melissa, the Unlikely Hiker. I hope everyone is doing really well tonight. Today we're going to dive into the art of layering and how it can make a difference in comfort and safety while backpacking during changing weather conditions. When it comes to hiking and backpacking, the weather can change unexpectedly, especially in the shoulder seasons. This is where layering becomes essential. By utilizing multiple layers, we can easily adjust our body temperature while we're out there hiking. It's important to stay dry and comfortable while you're out backpacking in the shoulder seasons because the weather can change unexpectedly. It can be warmer or colder or wetter than you thought it was gonna be at the start of your trip. But by bringing together multiple layers, in your hiking kit, in your clothes, you're gonna stay dry, comfortable, and be a happy hiker. First, let's start with the base layer, which is in direct contact with your skin. You wanna choose ideally a synthetic moisture wicking and snug fitting base layer. And something like a base layer tight can easily go under your shorts when it's cool out, but not that cold. Next, we're gonna move on to the mid layer. Your mid layer provides insulation by trapping warm air close to your body. A fleece or a puffy jacket are excellent options. In my opinion, I like having a fleece as an insulation layer and then a puffy jacket to put on when I stop because inevitably you are gonna be a little sweaty and you're gonna want something to go ahead and trap that warm air that you're producing inside. The key is to create a warm microclimate close to your body and help prevent overheating. In my personal opinion, a fleece insulating layer and a puffy insulating layer are two mid layers, if you will, that are gonna work in conjunction. I'm always gonna carry one and wear the other if I get cold, but it really is important, depending on where you're hiking, to pair those things together for maximum warmth and comfort. And your insulating layer also includes your bottom half. I like to wear a puffy skirt. I also have puffy pants. Put those together if it was really cold out and that's gonna help keep my bottom half really warm. In the winter, I like to hike in leggings, so that's why I really enjoy using a puffy skirt because it adds just a little bit more warmth and some pockets. It's just the way to go for me. I really love it. Finally, you got your hard shell. The purpose of this is really to keep the warmth in and the wind and the rain out and the elements around you. In the event of rain or snow, that's gonna keep your insulating layers dry. For your shell, what you're really looking for is something that's breathable and windproof and waterproof. I say breathable because, you know, it rarely is truly breathable, but better than a plastic bag. The more expensive materials do do a little bit better of a job of taking some moisture that's inside of your clothes from the heat you're producing and moving it to the outside, but it is just not perfect, which is why you want to try and minimize the amount of sweat that you're producing by adjusting your layers while you're backpacking and hiking. It is really important that your layers be adjustable and work together so that you can create the ideal setup, the ideal layering system for the hike that you're on on that day. Think about how a through hiker brings certain layers so that they can mix and match those clothes to get maximum comfort with minimum clothing. It's also a good idea for your shell layers to have pit zips. Some of my shell pants also have zippers. You open those up, you can dump some heat out, but you're also keeping a lot of the warmth in and you're still blocking that wind from chilling you down. It's also important to have layers that offer some type of zipper, so that way you can zip it up if you get cold, you can unzip it if you get warm, and kind of adjust your temperature that way also. And don't forget layering for your hands. I always use glove liners and then mittens on top. The purpose of that is if my hands get warm, I can take the mittens off and I still have the liners to protect my hands when it's chilly out. I also bring extra glove liners because my hands sweat and those glove liners will get wet. So by carrying a couple spare pairs, my hands will most certainly stay as comfortable as possible while I'm out there. And it's gonna keep my mittens from getting wet on the inside, which is also going to keep me more comfortable while I'm hiking. I'd like to point out that all of these items that I'm discussing are available at a variety of price points. Don't think that you have to go out 
and get the most expensive base layer or an alpha fleece or capiline base layers. None of this is necessary. My base layers here, they're from Costco and they come in a two pack and I think it's $15 for two shirts, $15 for two pants. Any fleece will work, any puffy jacket will work, any rain jacket, any rain pants. Again, it's more important for you to get out and enjoy backpacking and hiking year round than it is for you to have the fanciest clothing. If you're gonna be spending time in some truly brutal terrain, you might want to opt for more bomb proof layers, but that's not most people. So take that with a grain of salt. You don't have to spend a ton of money on your base layers. A fleece from Walmart is going to keep you just as warm as a fleece from Patagonia. And like I pointed out with gloves, layering is not just about your clothing, but it can also include neck gaiters, hats, scarves, extra gloves, extra socks, and an extra shirt. It's all about additional warmth, protecting yourself from the elements, and staying dry. As backpackers, it's our responsibility to make sure that we're prepared for a variety of situations while we're out there. It's essential to pack extra layers and extra items and make sure that they're relatively lightweight and compressible. Make sure you're always analyzing and checking in with yourself on your body temperature. Are you too warm? Are you too cold? Are your hands cold? Are your feet wet? Just like in the summer, it's really important to stop and take care of these items as they happen. If you're starting to go uphill and you think to yourself, no, I'm not gonna stop here. I'm just gonna get to the top and then I'll take my jacket off. Well, by the time you get to the top, it very well might be too late and you're already wet. And maybe you sweat in your down jacket and now it's not gonna offer the warmth that it could have had it stayed dry. So these are all things to consider. You need to check in with yourself, pay attention to what your body is saying. Am I too cold, too warm, hungry, whatever, doesn't matter. Are my fingers numb? Are my feet numb? Listen to it and deal with the situation as they arise. Stay tuned for a video about different types of cold emergencies because I will be making that in the very near future. And there you have it, the art of layering. It really doesn't have to be difficult. It doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to be confusing. But by mastering layering, you'll be equipped to deal with any changing situation that you might encounter while you're out backpacking and hiking. The cold weather and the fall and the winter and early spring, these can be amazing times to go enjoy the backcountry. Generally speaking, there's fewer people, there's no bugs, and it's just a beautiful time to get outside when most people are hibernating on their couch. It's all about living life to the fullest and enjoying today. So thanks for joining me today. If you did find any value in this video, please go ahead, hit that like button, subscribe if you're not subscribed. 86% of my viewers are not subscribed. Why? I don't know. Subscribe. Thanks for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Take care. We will see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.